this video is going to cover how to do the 3-3 worksheet and the 3-4 worksheet. It's not going to cover everything, but it's going to give you an idea of how to complete it uh, if you were maybe not sure. So uh, in the first section of the 3-3 worksheet, I ask you to draw the electrons as a configuration for elements 1 through 18. So that's from hydrogen to argon. Uh, and, and so what you should do here is you don't, you don't have to necessarily put the, the positive charge of the nucleus in the middle there, but I did just to uh, help me keep track of where I was. So you want to you know, include that if you'd like, but then uh, put the shell around it, okay, and then fill in the electrons, right? So hydrogen would just have one electron, right, in the first shell. Uh, over on the right, you know, here we have helium, two electrons in the first shell, and now this shell is filled completely. Uh, and so we go to the next one out, right? So we have a new valence shell here with lithium. First two electrons out of the three go in the inner shell, and we have one in the valence shell, right? Uh, and that's what all of these 1A elements have in common is they're going to have one valence electron, right? So you notice the same thing down here on sodium. It's got one electron in that outermost shell. Here with beryllium, we have a plus four nucleus, four protons, so four electrons, two electrons in the inner shell, and two in the valence shell. Okay, it would look like that. Uh, and so this, this second shell, right, will have a maximum of eight. So the first one has a maximum of two. The second one has a maximum of eight. Uh, so you would just continue to add one more all the way out here until you get to neon, uh, where you'll have a completely filled valence shell. So something you'll notice is all of these uh, noble gases over here will have completely filled valence shells, right? And so when it continues back on to the next one in the, in the uh, numerical order there, right, atomic number by atomic number, it's going to add a new shell to it, okay? Uh, so you can kind of see the pattern forming in the periodic table. So uh, you can fill in the rest of these boxes here uh, all the way out to argon with 18. The second part is asking you to predict uh, what's going to happen when a particular element or an atom of an element is going to go form an ion, potentially? Uh, so I'll start by having you cross off a couple of boxes here because you might not necessarily be able to predict what's going to happen. Uh, the first one is the box here for hydrogen, right, element one, uh, and also these two boxes here for family 4A, and you'll see why here in just a moment. Uh, I've gone ahead and pre-filled in the same ones as above because... Uh, we're going to use those to help us explain what's going to happen here, okay? Uh, if you recall from the video, uh, atoms or elements that are not part of the noble gases, uh, they are going to want to react to try to create a valence shell, okay, similar to something in the noble gases. Uh, and so we'll kind of take a look at what that means here. We'll start here with helium. Helium has two electrons. Both are in the first shell, which is also the valence shell, and this is filled. So helium is non-reactive because this valence shell is filled. These electrons are going to stay put. We're not going to lose one or gain one. Right? There's nowhere for it to go. We're not going to gain a shell. Uh, it's nice and happy, so it's going to stay just like that. When we come over here to lithium, right, we've got two in the inner electron shell and then one in this valence shell. Uh, but what ends up happening is right, this atom here wants to attain the similar electron structure as the nearest noble gas. In this case, that is helium. Uh, right? It wants to have a completely filled valence shell. Right now it's only got one in there. So how it's going to accomplish that is by losing this outermost electron, right? And then that would expose the uh, inner shell is now the valence shell, and that would be completely filled. So what's going to happen here with elements in family 1A, okay, is that valence shell, uh, it's that one electron in the outermost valence shell is going to be lost, and we're going to have now a similar electron set up as the closest noble gas. The same thing will happen with beryllium, okay, but instead of losing one electron, right, this one, okay, is going to lose these two electrons to make that happen, uh, and it's once again going to have a similar electron structure as helium, okay? Uh, now that has some effects on the charge here of these families. Uh, we'll go ahead and take care of sodium while we are at it, uh, right? It's got that one outermost 
valence electron, so it's going to lose that. I'll go ahead and erase that off the out of that box. Okay, there we go. Uh, these have both lost one electron, right? It's got three positive charges and two negative charges now for lithium. Sodium would have you know 11 positive charges and 10 negative charges. Uh, and it's a little counterintuitive because you're losing something, but you're losing something with a negative charge. You've lost one thing with a negative charge, uh, and that results in whoops in f things in family 1A, okay, having a plus one charge when they form ions. And kind of as you might be able to then see here with the family 2A, okay, so we'll take care of magnesium here real quickly. So we'll lose that outermost shell to lose two electrons. Uh, and now we have two more positive charges than we have negative charges for both beryllium here and magnesium. So that family forms, oops, got to change the color back to, there we go, forms a positive two charge. Okay, and you might be able to guess then, right, that family 3A would form a plus three charge. Notice in both of these cases here, lithium and beryllium, uh, they wanted to become like helium. That's the closest one, right? Okay, this is, you know, three, this one's two, this one's four, this one's two, so that's the closest one, all right? When we come over on this side of the table, okay, uh, magnesium and sodium both have lost electrons to end up like neon. Uh, but what happens here with fluorine? Fluorine has seven valence electrons, uh, to get a, a completely filled valence shell, uh, right, one option would be to lose all seven of these, though that would be quite difficult to achieve. Uh, instead, it is much more likely to simply add one electron on. So it's going to pick up one more electron, which we'll draw in here, okay, to fill that valence shell. Uh, the result is now that things in family 7a tend to have a minus one charge as they pick up one more negative charge. Things in the noble gases, right, have no charge, right? They don't react, they don't gain or lose electrons, they're nice and stable. Uh, so you can kind of see a pattern forming here, right? This is plus one, this is plus two, this one here would be plus three. If we're coming from the other direction, zero here, negative one, so you might be able to guess then that things in family 6a would have a negative two charge, and things in family 5a would have a negative three charge. Uh, and so this is why we had you, you know, cross off here the family with carbon, uh, family 4A, because uh, what does it do? Is it, is it plus 4? Is it minus 4? Uh, well, it kind of depends on what it's bonding to, actually, but uh, that's why carbon's quite versatile. But the rest of these, you can kind of see the patterns forming. So, uh, right, if it's, if it's on this side, it's going to try to go to the right to become like the noble gas. If it's over here, it's going to like lose electrons to become, to become like the noble gas in the row before it. Okay, so the 3-4 worksheet, uh, we'll start with the first couple sections, then we'll spend a little bit more time on the third section, just making sure you're good with that. Section 1 up here says, give the charge associated with each of the following. Uh, well, we just did this really on the uh, bottom part of the last worksheet, so uh, we should be able to predict the charge on things based on which family it's in. So magnesium is in family 2A. Uh, it has two valence electrons. It likes to lose those two valence electrons, right? It's got a plus two charge. Uh, calcium is also in family 2A. It's got two valence electrons. It likes to lose those two. Uh, oxygen is in family 6A. So it's got six valence electrons. It likes to gain two electrons. Uh, so that'll have a negative two charge, right? You're gaining negative charge. Uh, iodine is in the halogen family, so it's family 7A. It's got seven valence electrons. It wants one more, so it'll have a negative one charge. Lithium is in family 1A, uh, so it's going to have a plus one charge, right? One valence electron. Uh, and fluorine is in the halogens as well, just like iodine, so it's going to want to gain one. It's got seven valence electrons. The second section here, you need your ion sheet for, uh, and so this is under the resources part of Google Classroom. I will probably give you guys a hard copy of that next week once I'm back. So uh, what you just need to do there is go find the name of the ion and basically write it down. So NH4 plus one charge, that is the ammonium ion. Uh, OH with a negative one charge, that is the hydroxide ion, right? Uh, I don't need to go through all those, right? You guys can find those on the ion sheet. 
Okay, so how to predict what formula we're going to have between two given ions. Uh, I'll try to pick some of the easy ones first and kind of work towards the more difficult ones. Uh, you should recall from the Ed puzzle that uh, you want the overall charge on an ionic compound to be zero. That is that right, the positively charged cation and the negatively charged anion, uh, the total charge should end up at zero, right? So all the positives balanced by the negative. Um, so taking a look here at this first one, one of the easy ones, number 15, you've got a silver ion with a plus one charge and a chloride ion with a minus one charge. The plus one and minus one are going to balance out. So you only need one of each. Uh, and the formula for this will be AgCl. Uh, notice we don't put anything about the charges up here. Okay, so we don't have that. Uh, we also don't have anything subscript-wise, nothing beneath it, because if, if there's nothing there, we assume it to be 1, and that's the case here. So we have just one of uh, each ion, so AgCl. So one of each looks like that. Okay, so looking at 16, uh, we got a little bit more complicated-looking ions, but it's really not too bad. We have an NH4 plus 1 ion, that's ammonium, and an NO3 negative 1 ion, that's a nitrate ion. Uh, well, this is just a plus 1 charge. That's just a minus 1 charge. Uh, so you just need one of each. So we're just going to combine those together into one long formula. Uh, NH4 NO3. Uh, that thing is called ammonium nitrate. Uh, you might remember kind of at the beginning of last school year, there was a big explosion um, in Beirut, Lebanon. Uh, that was, the whole city was a big giant like mushroom cloud uh, from a storage facility that exploded. It was full of ammonium nitrate. You guys might remember some of those videos from last year. Uh, but just one of each ion there, right? These are polyatomic ions. You've got more than one type of atom, right? The ones over here are monatomic, just one, one atom, right? One atom. Uh, these are both polyatomic, right? There's more than one thing here, more than one thing here. Okay, looking at one like, say, number 18 now. We have a Cu with a plus 2 charge and a sulfate ion, SO4, with a negative 2 charge. Uh, the positive 2 and negative 2 are going to balance out, so you only need one of each of these, okay, to get the formula here. So just one copper and one sulfate ion, so this is just CuSO4. Okay, so the 2s are going to right, cancel out, just one of each. So, so far... All these have just been one of each. Everything's canceled out. Take a look at number 22. Uh, so now we've got a potassium ion with a plus one charge and a sulfate ion with a negative two charge. So now my charges aren't initially balanced. Uh, I'm going to need one additional potassium ion here to balance the fact that this sulfide has a negative two charge. So right, I need, ultimately my formula, I need two of this thing and one of this thing, right? two potassiums and one sulfide. Uh, so how we're going to write that, right, potassium like that, I have two of them, so that goes underneath the line as a subscript, and then one sulfide. So it will look just like that. Okay, so for perhaps a little bit more complicated one, um, let's look at number 13 here. Uh, we've got a chromium plus two ion. It's called a chromium two ion. Uh, and this is a hypochlorite ion, ClO, with a negative one charge. Uh, and by the way, when it comes to polyatomic ions, you can't separate them. This whole thing has to stay together. Uh, so we'll see what that means here in a moment. But this is a plus two charge. This is a negative one charge, which means, right in my formula, I'm going to need one of the cr uh, chromium plus two ions, and I need two of the hypochlorite ion. Uh, so what's that going to look like? Well, the CR is an easy part here, right? That's just going to look like that, and I've only got one of it. Uh, the CLO part, well, I've got, I've got two of them. So here's two things not to do. Don't do this. Don't go Cl2O2, okay? Uh, don't do that, right? That's not actually going to help me as, or help any chemist uh, realize what it is you're talking about. So that's not, not correct. Don't do that, okay? Don't do this. Don't go clo Two, uh, because what you just did is you changed the formula for this thing. Instead of ClO, it's ClO2, and the 2 is only applying to this oxygen. It's not applying to this chlorine here. Uh, the correct way to do this, okay, to indicate that you have two of this entire thing, is to put that into parentheses. It's going to look like that. Okay, so to be clear, these parentheses only happen in... Well, two things have to be true for you to use them. Number one, 
The ion needs to be a polyatomic ion, okay? Uh, and then number two, you need more than one of them. So we had two of them here. So in order to indicate that, right, we needed parentheses. So, if, for instance, if we look back at number 16, these are both polyatomic, but there was only one of them necessary to make this formula. So I didn't need any parentheses around the NH4 or the NO3. I didn't need any parentheses around this SO4 because there was only one of them, okay? Looking at an example like number 22, right, I had two potassiums, but I don't have parentheses because this is a monatomic ion, right? So we're not going to use parentheses there. We use parentheses for two reasons, right? Number one, uh, it is a polyatomic ion, and then number two, you have more than one of them, okay? Uh, all right, so let's take a look at probably the most difficult one on this page, uh, Fe plus 2 and PO4 negative 3, so it's number 14. Um, all right, so we've got a plus 2 and a negative 3, so you, you want to think of this as kind of finding the least common multiple of 2 and 3. Uh, right, which would be 6, right? So I want a total of positive 6 charge here and a total of negative 6 charge coming from that. Well, for me to get a total of positive 6 charge and each iron is plus 2, I'm going to need 3 of them, right? So I need 3 of this, of the iron plus 2, and the phosphate ion, each one is negative 3. I need a total of negative 6, so I need 2 of this thing, right? Okay, so that's going to be 2. Uh, formula here will look like Fe... 3 beneath the line, and then I have a polyatomic ion, a phosphate ion, PO4, and since there's more than one of them, I need it to be in parentheses, and we'll put the two afterwards, okay? So hopefully that gives you enough examples kind of from the easy ones like 15 and maybe 16 uh, to you know, something like 18 to, you know, ones that require a little bit more thought, maybe like 22, uh, to one like number 13, where you've got, you know, now you've got a polyatomic ion, you have more than one of them, so you need some parentheses. And then to one like number 14, where neither of the ions are going to be the value of one, right? We've got multiple of, of both of them, okay? So if you need to unsubmit your work and resubmit your work, that is fine. Uh, I won't count it late, uh, but hopefully having these examples here, you can answer the ones on the following page. I'll see you guys when I get back.